Hi, my name's Willix, and this is episode five of Ferris Block. Well, today we're going to make a melting chamber and a crystallization chamber so we can make some reinforced survivalist strainer, which will start dropping us lapis and prosperity shards and dimensional shards and all those things we were missing from before. We'll touch very basically on engineer, engineering orb, sorry, energizing orb, and then um, we'll kill, kill some weathers after that. But first off, let's cover off some updates. First off, they, we, I've updated to 10.22 for this. Oh, I made some um, diamond mob farms. And uh, they changed it so that we now get use lava monsters. We'll drop both the magna creams and the fire charges. I took them out because they, the last two just kept wearing out way too fast and I was getting sidetracked doing this over and over and over again. Those were from the magna creams that I had. The rest of this was all from uh, lava monsters. So I was doing lava monsters. I was doing my gas. Oh, and they're now dropping experience confection as well. And then a bunch were uh, wither skeletons. I had three of those going. But seriously, it was like every 10 minutes I had to replace the lasso. I was like, this is taking too much, too much of my time. I've got to figure out a better way of doing that. I should not have made... The, don't make eight of these things. <clears throat> They're too much of a pain in the butt. You'd be all day uh, just changing the lassos on eight of them. All right. Other things to cover off. Um, some other changes. For instance, the Philosopher's Stone now takes black diamonds, so you must have been to the nether to collect a black diamond. Before, and black diamonds aren't f hard to find in the nether. They're not like finding diamonds or anything. I've got, uh, I found a whole pile of them, so it wasn't a problem. I was really looking for these three here. Um, let's cover that off. Since I've been there, I can make myself a better bow now. Like if we look at this one, we're doing uh, 8.49, and that's with the uh, upgrades. This one does 10.85. I've used, really doesn't matter which order these are in, just slight differences, not much. Because they're all four times range damage for all three of these stones. And the other two things are the same as before. So I can make myself a new bow. And that's what happened. Okay, so now we can put, uh, that's one of the redstone ones. So that takes it from the, uh, 10.85 up to uh, 12.85 and this will give it just a little little extra durability so now we got a better bow I'm not going to throw out my old one whoops going over there now now he is going to I should take that with me he is going to be making some changes to these colossal chests, but I'm going to wait and see because every time I talk to him, he's changed his mind on what changes he's making to them, but that's upcoming. What else did we hit? There's a lot of other things that change that I haven't gotten to yet, so it's not uh, that big an issue um, from what I've covered. So let's get started on what we were going to do. Oh, one other thing that I changed over... Um, for this guy. And this was suggested to me by Sil Silverstar Ebonclaw that if I put 27 speed upgrades, I think I'd only had 16 in there before, it still draws zero RF per tick. So that was uh, definitely worthwhile. And something I completely forgot to put in last time and I knew better was the multiplying up upgrade. So now I'll get three of everything instead of one of everything because I've added two of these to it. So um, definitely worthwhile. The other thing I got to do is the experience upgrades. So upgrades, which are, which upgrades are they? Up here, those ones there, I need bottle, bottle of enchanting. So we're going to do that with our crystallization chamber once we get up there, which we're making this episode. So not a big problem. All right, but basically it's hooked up to this and feeding into that. So I just put a whole bunch in, in there or up here and it all goes into the chest. 
All right, so first off, we did get some uh, recipe for that is crimson ore. I put it in there and I was getting three per because of the uh, ore doubling things. And so we're going to make ourselves some crimson steel. And we're going to come over here and we're going to take one of those crimson steel and I'll put it in there. And that gave us a mana steel in here. Then we're going to come over here. And I've already got mana powder that's just uh, redstone in there. That, 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 and another brick. And then we're going to take that, those things. And, oh, I should have uh, cleared some of this stuff off my uh, bar so that those things could have gone on my bar. That would have been a smarter idea, right? Oh, I know what I haven't done. Um, I'm going to need that and those. I kept moving this and I decided, oh, I'm not going to put them down until I figure out exactly where everything is going. So uh, let's put one there, one there. This is in bind mode. Yes. Okay. Oh, and we're going to need a living rock. That's what else I don't have with me. Unless there was one in that chest and I just didn't notice it. And then, oh. Click that in there. And that got us our two fire runes. We'll come over here. And so that's obsidian. Those fire charges that I wanted. Remember those? The magna creams that I wanted. And some of that. And we're going to take one fire room, put it in there, and we get our melting chamber. And then we're going to come over here, take our next fire room, we'll put it in there. Oh, and to get the crystallized honey, that is a compressor with honey blocks, which are, I got them from the quest. I haven't made my own honey yet. And this stuff was from crushing some dimensional shards and that's obsidian and that gets us our crystallization chamber and to make all that work we're going to need some fluid cable from i'm using the cyclic one because cyclic machines don't always cooperate with others and i'm going to need a wrench cable wrench oh and these ones Oh, I already made the power for them, didn't I? Yeah. So we'll come over here. Now, I've got two of those power cables from Cyclic. They, they made much the same as the fluid cables. And I've attached it up to that because these things didn't like connecting to the uh, other ones. So they now both have power. And we're going to connect... We want this to be, I hope that's an extract. We'll soon find out. So we look in here, we have some magna blocks and we're gonna put uh, magna blocks in like this. And that's putting the stuff over here. Why does that not show any power? Neither does that. Because this weak ass little power supply just doesn't have enough power in it. <laughs> okay. And this is sucking up all the power. So, I don't know what to do about that because I need to get power into this guy. And we're going to put these things 
Uh, if I'd order the big one. I don't know if the order matters. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to get power. That's the other thing I was planning on doing this episode was uh, upgrading my power system. I even went as far. Well, let's hope. Did I do that? Did I remember to do that? Yeah, I disconnected the power from here because this thing was sucking it all up. Eh? It's got 21 million in there now. And it can fit a lot more than that. But I don't think anything other than... I don't think anything's sucking up power now. So why is it not getting power? The cable has power. It's all going somewhere. Must be going into here, the melting chamber. Oh, did it melt all of that stuff? Is that what happened? Oh, and now it's making it. Okay. So it had to melt all the stuff first, and then uh, we'll give it some time. All right. So next up, we're going to make some infused diamonds with dimensional shards. So this is like a few stacks of them, like three stacks of dimensional shards. That is one of the harder things to find down in the... Uh, um, down in the nether, I found I was better mining down than trying to search on the surface for it. And those things don't want to stack. Okay, interesting. And then we're going to make some obsidian mesh. And how are you doing? Are you finished? Yes. Okay, so I guess we're on to this guy here. And that made six of them. And these th I let all these run out. On purpose. Oops, what am I doing? Oh, something else I should plug in. I wasn't planning it for this episode, but in the beginning, I spoke very poorly of the fish traps. Um, like a, a, the wood one is one of the quests, but you can make diamond ones and stuff as well, right? These things may not be so bad because really out of this... The only thing I'm interested in getting now are the books. And it the fish traps are fine for books, and they don't involve bait or replacing strainers at all. They just keep working. The key with them, though, is you got to put a pipe or a hopper underneath it and pull everything out of the fish trap immediately. Because if the books start to stack... They lose their, uh, what they are. So see, like, whereas this one is an unbreaking one book, it wouldn't be that. It'd just be a generic magic book of some sort as they start to stack. Same thing with the Neptune's Bounty. you got to pull them out right away. And they're going to take up a lot of room. So make, feed them into a big chest when you do it. But that I probably should have done that so that I could get some better books. All right, so we've got those things going. Other things that uh, changed in the episode is to make the gob, gobber globs, which I, I had already done for last episode and then decided, no, I'll wait till this episode because I know it's changing. And remember, I deliberately went out and got myself some nether bananas and I got some uh, euclis and some benedite and some wub gems. And that's how you make the gobbler globs now. And then you take the gobbler globs, wheat and beetroot. Beetroot is carrot in a mana pool with a catalyst. And then you can make your seeds with that. And I've got some seeds going 
here. And I'm getting lots of the goblets from there. Then you can take the seeds, these seeds here, put them with one of these, which is uh, smelting down some of the nether gobbler ore that I got last episode. And you get these things, and then you can make one of the nether seeds. And I put another seed over here. And so we're getting lots more of those. It had poppies in there from before. Remember I said, I need to put the poppies in uh, one of those hopping bonsais because I've only got one of them. Well, now I've got more. <laughs> All right. And then what we can do is we can make some nether goblet ingots, which are the, these ingots, which look like that. So we've made nine of those. And then we take those and use of these. I want to make a sword, so, which I think is like the last one. Yeah. So I need to make one of these first, the rods. And then use, it's probably the last one again, sword. Yeah. Then we can make a sword. Need those things on me anymore. And I'm going to make myself a disenchanter. It's just obsidian and an enchanting table. Enchanting table is the basic recipe. Okay, now notice I've got this sword here, Captive Dreams. I got it by trading one of those uh, traveling vendors. He wanted like a stack of emeralds for this thing and a diamond sword combined before I got this. But it, what I was interested in is it has capturing three on it. Well, uh, everything on it is good, everything. But I want to put it on this sword instead. See, this is a 10, that's a 13. And look at what, what the green text on this one. Great at getting wither skeleton skulls. So I was going to put it on that sword instead. Oh, and this is a 2.2 .2 speed. This is a 1.6 speed. So it's faster, does more damage, gathers more willish, wither skeleton skulls. In general, better, right? So if I want to change all those enchants over to this sword, the gobbler sword, I'm going to come over here. And oh, so that power is running all the way underneath to here. And now I don't know if it needs this many bookcases. That's what an enchanting table would need. And I know if it doesn't have bookcases, some number of them, I don't know how many, um, then it damages whatever you're putting in it. So I am going to put this in here and some books. And I can pull off that. And so I pulled all my enchants off of my uh, sword here. And so then we can come over here and we'll put our this in and that is the capturing. So I want to make sure I get that one done. And sharpness would be very good. Looting would be very good. Unbreaking. Can we do that one? We don't have enough experience. Okay, can we do this one? Yeah. Okay, so to do this last book here, enchantment cost is 35. I need 35 experience to do it. So how do I get myself 35 experience when I've only got six? We'll come over here and we'll grab... I don't know if I need that many of them, but we'll find out. We'll grab these things and we make the orbs and then we start eating orbs. 
what I need, 35? There we go, we've got 35. We put this back in here, that in there, and there's our 35. There we go. And what else did I have going on over here? Um, okay, I had planned on doing a whole bunch of stuff to upgrade my power supply, but it's going to take way longer than I thought it was when I started making up the tables. For now, I'm just going to make the energizing orb, which is just the easy stuff that I've made before. And then come over here and I'm going to make a wrench. And I'm going to make energizing rods. So I made all this stuff before. So I'm, I'm going to try it with three of them. I don't know whether that's enough or too many or what it is. And then I'm going to put one in there, there. That's block of quartz, like that. And we're going to come over, and I'm not sure if these can go underneath the cable or not. I'm just going to stick them on top for now, try them that way, and then we'll decide later if... I'm going to play around with it off camera to find out uh, what's the best way to do this. And then I'm going to put down, I guess I'll put it there. Now, link. Well, they're all linked to it. Okay, so that is done, that part of it. Now, what we're going to do, I'm just going to do it with one for now because I don't want to wait for all this to happen, but I've got to do it to all of these, right? Put one of those down, one of those down, and you can see, you can see it powering through its thing, and it does that, and we get these out of that. Now, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to figure out a way to automate this. I haven't decided how I want to automate it. I want to test it out off camera, whether I'm going to be better off doing it with um, hoppers or droppers or some, one of the piping systems and whether I should be using uh, comparators or inventory checkers or timers or what it is that I should be doing with it. I'm going to play around with it and decide what I think is best for automating this. But I don't want to spend all my time doing that right now. So for now, let's just get uh, that and cabling. Oh, good grief. I got way too much stuff in here. Oh, let's... Tools. Let's keep those down here. And let's just start putting... No, that I need. That I need. That I need. Don't need these on me. Don't need those on me. Don't need that. Oh, what this thing is... I, I don't remember whether I had this last episode or not. Um, the recipe, it's dirt simple. And you can use it like a cardboard box to move uh, full uh, containers, like I moved my gold one and I made it ready for something else. I forget what. I don't remember what I was planning on moving that to. Um, I moved my coal one as well. I moved it over there. don't know what I did with the coal. I put it somewhere. Oh, is this all coal? That's probably it. Yeah, so I, I moved around some things like that. All right. And now, this is the cheapest form of uh, witherproof something. So it's just uh, black stained glass. Oh, recipe for black stained glass. You need black dye, which I made mine with blasted some coal, and that gives me, gives me black dye. And some obsidian. And 
and then all the rest of that can wait till uh, next episode. So let's go play around with the wither. So actually, let's make sure I've got everything on me. I have soul sand, wither skulls, that, something to kill them. We can use this as well. Uh, oh, let's get rid of my... Actually, let's put it over here now. Don't need to be carrying that on me. And until I replace this with one of those uh, um, gobber pickaxes, we'll stick there. So let's see how we do with this. I haven't done this in my test world yet. I really probably should have. Okay, so we'll go to my nether mine. That way, if things go horribly wrong, it happens down here, not up in my... Zombie pigment, baby zombie pigment. Okay, they're not attacking me. That's fine then. I don't know what blows up and what doesn't, but I don't want to do it too close to the thing. Notice that there is no way in and out of this room now. It filled back in when I updated to 2-2. Uh, two, two. There's no, uh, no exit. I don't know what happened there. Let's do it over in this little corner here. That seems far enough out of the way and uh, could be good. So what we want, I'm going to want some building stuff here. So it's going to be two... Actually, let's put one of those up there. Then we're going to put a gap of one. And I'm going to put a section of these. Actually, let's do a full. I don't know if it needs to be full, but I'm going to make it full just in case. Oh, we'll break that. That was just to uh, place a block. And then, okay, and I need to remember where the center square is. So, whoops. I'm hoping that's where the center square is. And where, oh, I, I don't, I want it to look the same because I don't want, uh, get myself confused. Now I don't know if this stuff blows up the nether uh, nether rack. Yeah, that looks like it's centered correctly on this. Okay, now the way I'm going to do it. Oh, does that need to be up one further? I don't know. We're about to find out. It needs to be one, then the T, and then this, I think. Yep, that's how it's done. Are you going to explode? And what all did we get there? We got a nether star, a soul gem from a wither. Okay. All right. So we can do that a few times. Well, I'm not going to make you wait while I do it a whole bunch of times. But see, this is the layout here. So the cobblestone is my center square. I lay them down on their side. And then what what happens when I put these on there? 
is he pops up and his head gets stuck up there and he gets stuck inside the netherproof bricks and then he can't hit he can't see anything he can't hit anything see that explosion bounced me back a little bit i wonder if it some damage to me i just didn't notice it so he can't hit me, but I can hit him now. That's two nether stars. So I can do this to my heart's delight and keep doing him. He is causing no damage to anything. Um, I think there needs to be an air gap. At least there used to be when I first tested this out. If you don't have that air gap above it, then you got a problem. And if you don't have a block above it, he can shoot straight up and cause a hole that way. Do not try this method in a pack that contains, I forget whether it's Epic Siege mod that does it or uh, Hardcore Wither, or there might be other mods that cause problems too, like special boss mob ones. Um, anything that gives the Wither teleport, don't do this. <laughs> Oh, you'll have bad surprises. The first time I tried this in Project Ozone 1, I think it was, I went, oh, <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> but it was in a test world, so I guess it didn't matter, but he destroyed my base. So that's why I brought him down here in case I blew it and made a mistake. But that's the layout. His head gets stuck in this middle block here. He can't shoot anything out through it and it's all weatherproof blocks around it. So that's it for this episode, I think. We'll go back and home. I didn't even turn on my jetpack this time. I always turn it on when I go to the nether. And let's see what we got in here for... Oh, I should have sorted all this just before I... Uh... Yeah, so we're getting some prismarine shards. I can't be bothered looking for it, but uh, we're probably getting the other stuff I need. Like, there's probably lapis in here somewhere. I, I had pulled things out, so whatever. Too much, too big a chest. All right, so that's it for this episode. Oh, one other thing I noticed. I was um, going down in the nether and mining a lot, and the uh, the cooked fish just wasn't cutting it. <laughs> so I made myself something better. This is just basically five bread and you get five uh, shanks out of it and all that saturation. So for something that cheap, and I'm, I've am i got uh, wheat going over here, so it was nothing for me to make that. And uh, the other thing you can make if you happen to be getting steak is a shish kebab. I don't have it up. No, I don't. I don't think that's it. Is it? Yeah, it is. So you take a steak, put it on two sticks, and then it jumps up to uh, five and 14. Now, if you want to get really good, um, you need to get yourself a, uh, a rat to make... This stuff. So it's just assorted vegetables, which is just, you know, whatever vegetable, nine vegetables. And a uh, chef rat. And you get this stuff. Take a look at that. 50 shanks, a thousand of the other thing. It won't make it very fast, but you don't need very much of it. <laughs> not if it's you eating it, because it's useless for, well, not useless, but a waste for. Um, the Garma Lily, because hit anything higher than six is a waste. Six shanks. Okay, I promise that was the end of the episode. So let's go to the end of the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Go out there and have some fun. Thanks. <laughs>